Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. I'm Deb McBride, and it is another beautiful Sunday in Escazú, Costa Rica. And today is the 11th of April, 2021. And this is uh, the beginning of a new week, and we've got a new moon tonight in my time zone and in this region of the world's time zone. But it is a special new moon, and we're going to start with that and talk all about it because it is at 22 degrees of Aries. Now, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Aries is the initiator, the warrior, the one who wants to start the fire, start the zodiac, and it is the first new moon of the zodiacal year. So we did not have new moons before this. (laughs) This is, uh, we had a full moon. But this is the first new moon, newness, new, new, new in the new year. Okay? I know you had a new moon in January. That's a different kind of new moon. That's the new moon of the Julian calendar year. This is the astrology year. So this is not just any old new moon. This is a new moon with Venus. And Venus is the planet of beauty and love and art and money. And she is feisty in Aries. Like I've said before, it's not her favorite sign. She has been close to the sun these last couple of weeks. She was close during the full moon two weeks ago. And it is an interesting and powerful new moon because Well, first of all, it's the new moon with the sun and the moon together and Venus. And so it is a certain amount about relationships, but they are making a challenge as which is known as a square to the planet Pluto. And Venus is going to square Pluto exactly. uh, Actually, yeah, it's going to square tonight. So the new moon is going to happen about an hour later. Venus will square Pluto, but it's all happening at the same time because the moon and the sun are in this position of uh, t- conjunction and they too are going to square Pluto. Now, the exactitude of the sun, since the sun is slowest in this little arrangement, the sun will square Pluto later this week. We'll get to that. But for right now, Let's just say the new moon is squaring Pluto with with Venus. So it's a new moon with Venus squaring Pluto. What does that mean? Venus and Pluto are tremendously passionate. They are intense. They are powerful feelings. They are powerful feelings of love. They could be powerful feelings of dislike towards someone or something. They're powerful feelings about your money. They are often... You know, it's not something that's just going to glide by you and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was a nice evening. There's either, there's something triggering it. Um, there's a lot triggering this planetary arrangement right now. So when Venus and the sun and the moon get together, it's like, wow, it's this new moon. It's this burst of of I'm sure in the north you're getting spring now you're really starting to see spring and it's this burst of spring and the days are getting longer and here the rainy season has just begun and so nature is just bursting out all over the grass is no longer I mean in two big rains we've had the grass is no longer brown <laughs> it's green and everything is just vernal and delicious and the scent in the air is delicious and and sexy and that's what venus and aries is she's sexy and feisty and juicy but i talked about elizabeth taylor last week right um you can go back and listen to that if you didn't hear it <laughs> but you know So we've got a sexy new moon, and now she's squaring Pluto. So, whoa, the goddesses are in an uproar. Venus, the moon, together squaring Pluto. They want to be active. They want to state their case. They want to be powerful and empowered and intense and passionate and juicy and sexy and and all good stuff. However, it is a challenging relationship. So... There are things that may set us on fire because this is an Aries and that may get us 
enraged or get under our skin or get us a little hot under the collar, whether it's in the good way of being ooh, passionate or Ugh, I'm going to kill someone. That's, that's, it's kind of an either or thing. And maybe it's a little bit of both. <laughs> so don't be surprised if you feel that you are completely um, consumed by fire right now. And fire is a powerful energy. Fire is, is all consuming. And it's difficult to detach ourselves when we are in a Venus Pluto mood because it's like obsession and obsessiveness and intensity and I need that intensity or I'm I'm in an intense mood and I need to be satisfied. There's a lot of that going on. So sort of cool your jets a bit if you can. <laughs> Take a deep breath, walk around the block, do a meditation, go for a run around the block, do some yoga stretches, watch a funny movie, <laughs> do something that's going to calm down that passion. But there's a desire to be and know and get to the bottom of something right now. And I understand that. I understand that maybe for some people enough is enough right now and they have to, they have to get some answers and they have to get some, they have to get some heat and um, maybe there's a little bit of heat. Maybe there's a little bit of drama going on. Maybe we all need a little drama right now. Try not to lose your temper. There's, there's four planets and Chiron in Aries right now. You know, it's sun, moon, Mercury, Venus. There's so much fire in the sky. And they are all answering to the planet Mars. They're disposed of the planet Mars, which is in Gemini. So there's the part of us that wants an answer. Gemini is full of information. Gemini is full of, you know, questions. Gemini is decisions and thoughts and articulations. And all of this can lead to an epiphany. You know, sun, moon, Venus, conjunct, squaring Pluto. Everything's answering to Mars, you know, like sending its information to Mars. Mars is in Gemini, you know, and it's a Mercury-Mars um what we call a mutual reception. Mercury is in Mars's sign. Mars is in Mercury's sign. So there's, I want answers. I want answers. I'm not satisfied. I want answers. And we might get heated about it. So just be really aware of that. Um, just be how, uh, just be uh, conscious and how you can satisfy your need, satisfy your need and not like punch someone. <laughs> It's a little complicated right now. So um, now this is this gets deeper and more intense. So why is that? Well, Mars is involved. Okay, so first of all, Mars is not really talking in aspect to the planet so much. Um, it is a little bit, you know. Mars is Mars is at twenty three. Yeah, it's kind of talking to them because the the the, the Venus and the sun, Moon are, are they're at twenty two, twenty one, and Venus is at twenty six. But the Sun and the Moon are at twenty two, and Mars is at twenty three. And that's there's a sextile, so it's a mild conversation. But they're all in his sign, so he's he's really the boss right now. And so then we we start to look at this a little more deeply. Twenty two degrees Aries. Well, last year, in the months of August through the months of December, our friend Mars, who lived in his own sign for six months because he went retrograde in 2020, the second half of 2020 was all about Mars and Aries. Mars moved over the spot of 22 degrees Aries three times. The first one was August, around the 10th of August. The second time was about the 10th of October. The third time was around December 20th. Hmm, December 20th. What is that? Don't we remember that time of year? Yeah, that was when Jupiter and Saturn conjunct in Aquarius. They were exact on the 21st, but they were close and touching each other on the 20th. You could see them in the sky. And so we had a triple passage of Mars over 22 degrees Aries. Now, Mars in his own sign likes to take action, likes to take initiative. What did you do? What happened in August? What happened in October? What happened in December? And is there something 
that's going on for you right now that relates to any of those events that makes you say, okay, I took some action, I made some decisions at that point, and they're coming back up to me now. Because that's probably what's happening. So if you took action and you took decisions and you made decisions and you you directed yourself, because Mars is about direction and initiation, um, there may have been a point, and Mars was retrograde in October. So let's remember, Mars went retrograde in September around the 9th, went direct in around the 15th of November and was so the first one, the first Mars hit of 22 Aries was August. Mars was direct. The second hit, which was more internal because it was retrograde, was like around October 10th. So that was an internal process. That was something you were feeling inside. And then by the time he was finished in December with 22 Aries, he was direct again because he had gone direct in November. And what happened was right at the same time Jupiter and Saturn were conjunct. So there's something about the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. There's something about the Mars retrograde. And let's just digest this all for a moment. That means that you were involved in something or something came up for you that you needed to deal with and you were expecting to handle. And maybe some of the decisions you made or some of the things that were um, processed at that time or, or talked about were, are now coming back up for you. So what happened back then? Did something happen during the retrograde and, and, and in October that is revisiting you now? Because these guys have, are all triggering that spot and it's Venus and it's the sun and it's, it's, it's a new moon. So it's, it's heating. It's a hot spot already because Mars, now think about it this way. Hmm, I have a jet on my stove. I've used it three times in the last few days, and now I'm, you know, or I've let, used it three times, and now I'm going to use it again. For I, I've cooked a, a pot of stew on it three times, and now I'm going to heat a, some water on it. That jet is probably still hot. <laughs> if you've cooked three times on it, it's probably still hot now, of course. This is over the course of months. If you made stew in October, it stove is still not hot from that. But just, just as an analogy, if you heat up a spot three times and then you come back again with another group of planets, you're heating that spot again. Okay? So that is a hot spot, that 22 degrees Aries. Okay? And... All we have to do is look at that and say, well, what was I doing? What, where, what, where's my mind at that point? What did I feel happened during that time? And, you know, I know I personally, I reached a point of, of in the middle, in the retrograde, I reached a point where I had to do something, take some action. And there was no way out of it. There was no way I had to take action in order to move forward. Now you think I was moving forward during a retrograde. What the hell's that? But it was necessary and it did move me forward. And it helped progress events around the Jupiter Saturn. Now I'm at a place where, again, I need to take some actions and they relate to what was happening back in, you know, when I took actions back October. Okay. So think about it from that perspective. You might have taken some action during some point. Um, you got some information, you did some work, you bought some property, you did a project, anything. You had a conversation with your spouse and now you're back to a place where that spot that was hot back then, that, that is now getting triggered again. So don't be surprised if you, you know, and I, I'm finding that, hey, I thought I solved this, and there's another piece that's not solved, and it needs to be solved. So there was this three motion movement, and there's a story that we each have from last half of the year of last year, and there's a story, and now that story is getting triggered again. And if the story makes you hot under the collar, you've got to smoothly, succinctly take some focused action about it. 
okay? And don't fly off the handle and try to be calm and rational <laughs> with four planets in Aries. Um, and try to be calm and rational and understand that these are moments when we are unraveling something, a story that needs some work. And that's all it is. It, it's a story that like is the continuing saga. Okay. So there was a saga last year. Now this is the continuing saga. Now, the fact that all of this is squaring Pluto doesn't really help because Mars, remember, Mars squared Pluto several times. And the last time it squared Pluto, it was right around that time of the Jupiter Saturn. So it was squaring Pluto. And these guys are just repeating what Mars did. This is what we call a recurrence. They're, they're just repeating what Mars did. And so Mars heated it up. Mars got the fire moving. Mars lit the fire and we got going. And now we're like, uh, I thought I didn't have to think about this story anymore. I thought this story was kind of taken care of. Uh-oh, I have to go back and solve something. Sigh. Well, all right, then you got to do what you got to do. In the meantime, this is not the end of the conundrum. What What's 22 degrees? Well, 22 degrees um, was the space in Capricorn. And 22 degrees Aries is not 22 degrees Capricorn, but it's cardinal. And so Aries, Libra, Capricorn, Cancer, these are cardinal signs. And we have a little special arrangement in, in astrology that we call the... the um, the 90 degree dial and it means that anything that happened at 22 degrees Capricorn technically happened at 22 degrees Aries too and Libra and Cancer okay and um so basically what what happened it's 22 degrees cardinal what happened at 22 degrees cardinal Saturn and Pluto met in January and started the pandemic and so, hmm, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that the place where the pandemic initiated in January of 2020 is now getting triggered in April of 2021. It's a famous point in the Zodiac. Uh, okay, so now we're, we're dealing with stuff around what could have possibly happened in the pandemic. Well, Everybody knows what they went through last year. It's fresh in our minds. You can't scratch your head and go, what was I doing in January and February and March? What, what happened? This is what you were doing. You were being told to go in and stay in. <laughs> and you were being told that things are changing and the world is changing. And so now, what do we have? We have an experience where that point is triggered and it's squaring Pluto. And Pluto was part of the initiation of the global events. And so we are in this profound, profound place. And how did you feel during that time? Didn't you want to break free of prison? Don't you want to break free of prison now? Don't you feel like you were devoid of information at some point? And maybe, maybe we, st because you lived in, we lived in an unknown world. We didn't know what was going to happen. And you know what? On some level, we still don't know what's going to happen. And it's really an amazing, amazing, long process. And people think, oh, well, you know, we're, we're getting out of this. We're not, we're not finished. It's, it's clear. It's getting triggered again today, tonight. And so we still have some thinking to do about all of this, about what happened in January, what happened to each of us all last year. And, you know, Jupiter and Pluto met for the last time in November, and they met at 22 degrees Capricorn before Jupiter and Pluto separated. And so there you go again. There's this 22 degree cardinal thing that we each are contending with. Now, for some reason we are being reminded of it again. And we need to look back at the actions we took because Mars was, you know, at that degree three times. And we need to think about what we processed and what decisions we made and what was good for us and what information we received 
that we either still need or no longer need. What's, what's the truth? What's not the truth? What's the known? What's not the known? And like, I feel that even though I took some actions last year and I got a certain amount of known um, dialogue and from my actions, I still have a whole bunch of things that are unknown. And you know what? Everything's in Aries. And guess what? We're annoyed. <laughs> We're annoyed. We're annoyed that we don't have full disclosure. We don't know if we have any information more than we had last six months of 2020. So we have to work our way through this. Each and every one of us has to work our way through this. This is not something that is, oh, yeah, great. It's a new moon. Let's have a, let's have a, you know, celebration. It's newness. Yes, it's newness. But there is something, there's a piece of the story that was going on from last year that is not resolved, especially the second half of 2020, not resolved. And you need to get some answers. Um, and it's complicated. It's complicated. So, yeah, we're, we're in, <laughs> Deb, you were in another complicated time. Yeah, we are. We are. We're in another complicated time. And the moon triggered Chiron yesterday, and so we may have had some very strong emotions in these last hours and, and two days because, you know, moon to Chiron is like licking our wounds in some way, like or triggering our wounds in some way. So, so here we are. Okay. New moon, 22 degrees reminds us of COVID reminds us of last six months of 2020. It reminds us of where we want to be feisty and where we want to put our fist down on the table and say, I need, I need the rest of this story resolved. I need to get to the answers here. And we're, we're in some frustrating experiences. Remember that the last Mars to 20, 22 degrees of Aries happened as Jupiter and Saturn were occurring. And we've had some very strong um, experiences as a result of that. And there were, there have been some strong experiences this year and last year. So think back to what you've been dealing with. Think back to where you're frustrated and work with the energy. Go seek the answers wherever you need to. And, you know, get an explanation. Um, get some clarity. And that's what I think we're lacking right now is we need some clarity because a square is just going to make us hot under the collar. And Pluto being a 26 of Aries is, I'm sorry, of Capricorn. It's not moved very far. It's a slow moving planet, but it's a 26 and Venus is going to square it. And we are trying to break through and understand things, you know, from, from the perspective, you know, we have to clear and have a different state of mind. We can't solve a problem from the same state of mind from which it was created. So we have to solve, take some new action and solve this, our issues, solve our problems with a different state of mind. You can't take the same state of mind from last year and expect that it's going to solve the problem now. Maybe you'll get some different answers if you go to different sources or approach the problem differently, but hopefully we've all moved to a different state of mind and we've got to get some clarity. Now, the sun is at 22, but it doesn't square Pluto until Thursday, oh, I'm sorry, Friday the 16th. So, wow. And Mars that same day is trining Jupiter. So my, Mars is going to make a nice relationship to Jupiter. And so the story from today and the story from last year is going to kind of pop up again on Friday. Thankfully, Mars and Jupiter are speaking sweetly to each other in air signs, and that's information. And maybe what's going to happen is if we feel we're lacking information, we're going to get some information that is desperately needed. And hopefully for each and every one of you, um, you get the answers that you require and need for your life. Um, in the meantime, on Saturday the 17th, we're going to have some, uh, you know, Mercury interest because Mercury is going to do a little dance with Mars and Jupiter. So 
it's going to sextile Mars. It's going to sextile Jupiter on Saturday. And that means that Mercury, which it will be in Aries, Mars is sign. Again, it's doing that mutual reception. It's going to be in the middle of this nice trine between Jupiter and Mars. So Ju Jupiter and Mars are talking nicely. Jupiter is the planet of abundance. It's in Aquarius. Mars is the planet of action and initiation in the it, sign of Gemini. And in the middle of that, sitting in the middle of the two of them, bridging the gap in a very nice way is Mercury, the planet of communication. So I, my gut feeling is we're going to get to the bottom of some things, some answers, and we're going to get some clarity and for each of us. And I'm, I'm thinking more personal lives. Um, there may be some global things too because of the nature of the aspects we're having today and through this week. But the sun uh, squaring Pluto on Friday, we're asking to be, we're asking for some transformation and it's information that will help transform us. So each of us today is asking for something that's going to transform our situation. And ask the gods, the goddesses, whoever you believe in, the universe, the archangels, whoever you speak to, your guides, and ask for help. And ask to get what you need. And ask to be something to be revealed to you that has been hidden from you and veiled from you so ask for that ask for that clarity and i think one of the things we need right now is clarity and as each of us seek clarity you know because aries is a very clear sign if we're not getting clarity and all of it's squaring pluto we're going to be hot under the collar for sure and frustrated and aggravated and annoyed and just just ready to, to just throw in the towel. You can't do that right now. We still have a story. There's still a chapter of the story that we haven't completed that we don't know yet. Okay? So let's work with that. Let's work with that. Oh. <laughs> in the meantime, Mars and the Sun will speak very nicely to each other on Tuesday, thankfully. Um, and Venus on Wednesday is going to go into one of her favorite places in the Zodiac, which is Taurus. And she's going to do that in the Eastern time zone, about 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, and that's nice. That is a really nice thing because Venus in Aries is feisty and she's like punchy and she she's, you know, a little... Um, you know, she's flirtatious, but she's also a little ready to start a fire. You know, once she goes into Taurus, she's, she can calm down. So that's good news. Venus is going to calm down. And that's that's a good thing. The sun is busy this week as it makes a nice relationship to Mars on Tuesday. Wednesday, Venus goes into Taurus. Um, Thursday, the sun talks to Jupiter very nicely. And then on Friday, it squares Pluto. So hopefully... We're going to get some real clarity. And then at the end, next Sunday, when we meet again, the sun will be on Mercury, which is not the first time this year. And right before it goes into Taurus on Monday the 19th. So this is the last week of Aries, where the sun is in Aries. And can you believe it? Another sign finished. But it's important to pay attention to this new moon and make a wish for Pete's sake, make a wish and ask, ask, ask for help because this is, this is a really edgy, edgy new moon and it brings back last year and it brings back frustrations and it brings back, you know, where we were getting clarity, but not entirely and where we still have some questions that we, we need answered. So do what you need to do to get those answers or get some satisfaction out of this. Venus is where we, we desire, and it's also where we get satisfied. So hopefully when she moves into Taurus this week, she will give us some satisfaction and we'll get what we need. And Venus likes to get what she needs. Now, um, we are still in Aries with the moon and then it's going to go void tomorrow morning, 8.06 a.m. Eastern time. Then it's going to 
go into Taurus at 1.44 p.m. And it's going to be a Taurus for the rest of the day and then on Tuesday and then Wednesday. It will be void at 8 p.m. and then not really get out of the void until it goes into Gemini Thursday at 2.30 in the morning. East, this is all Eastern time. It'll be... In Gemini, the moon, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, void, 11.03 a.m. till it goes into Cancer at 3.25 p.m. And then it's going to be in Cancer for the rest of the weekend. So, important. Um, and then on Monday the 19th, you know, both Mercury and the Sun will enter Taurus. And so, remember <laughs> what I said the other day? Things are marching along. You know, everything was in Aquarius. Everything was in... Then everything moved into Pisces. Then everything moved into Aries. Now everything's in Aries. And now everything is going to start moving into Taurus. We're having three planets go into Taurus. And Uranus is already there waiting for them. So look at that. We're having, we're having Venus go into Taurus. We're having the Sun go into Taurus. And we're having Mercury go into Taurus. That's three of them. It's like, hello. It's like they're trick-or-treating. You know, they've all arrived together at at Aquarius's house. And then they're moving into, um, you know, into Pisces' house. And then we're going to Aries' house. We're trick-or-treating. And then we're going, or they're holiday visiting. And then they're going to, to you know, where Uranus is in Taurus. And everybody's just marching along, the three of them, staying very close together. And uh, that's very interesting. That's why everything is so intense. So many things in one sign at the same time. Yes, I read something on one website. No more stelliums. Yes, this is a stellium. Four planets in Aries plus Chiron. That's a stellium. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're, we're moving along here. And we've got to get through these stelliums um, in a way that, is going to help us like it's not like one big lump of of frustration after another <laughs> you know we've got to things have to break up a little bit you know so that's that's the story um i put up my blog i talked all about this uh aries new moon so check it out uh, the golden astrologer.com astrologers thoughts scroll down to the bottom of the page and you click on astrologers thoughts and you can visit me on instagram which is you know the golden astrologer as well and uh i will be here again next sunday and i wish you all a beautiful taurian week um maybe things will slow down a little bit but i hope that for each of you it's a powerful revealing helpful and hopeful new moon. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good week.